Hi, my name is Dr. John Layden. I'm the chair and co-founder of the Unicorn Foundation Australia. Neuroendocrine tumours, or NETs, are an uncommon group of cancers derived from specialised cells found throughout the body. These neuroendocrine cells can undergo abnormal change and become tumours and spread to other organs. Professor Rodney Hicks is Director of Cancer Imaging, Co-Chair of the Neuroendocrine Services and Head of Molecular Imaging and Targeted Therapeutics at Peter McCallum Cancer Centre in Melbourne, Australia. I guess I'm giving away my age. I've been working in neuroendocrine tumours for uh, more than 20 years now. The first challenge we had was finding these tumours in many patients and as time went on we recognised that if we could see them we could treat them with internal radiation. Paul Stevenson suffers from metastatic neuroendocrine cancer. He is also a patient of Professor Hicks at Peter McCallum Cancer Centre. My journey started back in about March 2010, collapsed during the middle of the night with what turned out to be kidney stains. We went down to the uh, Monash Hospital and was getting scans and he actually noticed another shadow around my kidneys. I guess it's always uh, hard when you, when you see a patient as fit as Paul to believe that they have cancer. But if you saw his scan, you would uh, realise that he actually has a large number of tumours uh, in his body and particularly involving his liver. The bulk is in the liver, 15 in the liver, still with two around the pancreas, uh, one on the back of the lung, two in the pelvis and lots and dots all around the rest of the stomach. So I light up like a Christmas tree when I, when I have my PET scans. Despite several long and difficult surgical procedures to remove these cancers, including the removal of 30 centimetres of large bowel, not all of Paul's nets could be removed, particularly those that are found deep within his liver. We've followed these over a couple of years now and we know that they're growing and while they're not causing a problem immediately, because they are growing they will cause a problem uh, inevitably. They will impair the function of his liver, they will start to cause pain and eventually they will kill him if they're not controlled. When I first met again back on my birthday in 2010, they said it would be at least two years before I'd get on the treatment because that's how long the waiting list was. And in August 2013, they said, yes, we'll go and put you on the treatment. So it'll actually be three years and two months and eight days. Over the last uh, 17 years or so, we've been using peptide receptor radionuclide therapy as a means of, of treating these cancers. One of the characteristics of these tumours is that they have a receptor on their surface called the somatostatin receptor. The somatostatin allows us to deliver radioactive chemicals into the cell to treat them internally with radiation. That radiation is in the form of tiny particles called beta particles and each cell that takes up the isotope irradiates its neighbours and that process is often sufficient to either kill the cell or stop it growing. For lutetium, which is the most common form of peptide receptor radionuclide therapy we use, every cell will give off particles that go in a sphere of about two millimetres around that cell. There's also a small rim of normal tissue that also gets some radiation, but it's much less than using external radiotherapy in this form of targeted radiotherapy, only the cells that either have the receptor or in very close vicinity it gets radiation. It's a very smart form of radiation uh, therapy. After three years and two months on conventional treatments, Paul's neuroendocrine cancers continue to grow and spread. The multidisciplinary team have decided, based on his clinical condition, that he is a suitable candidate for the Lutate program. After the peptide and lutetium isotope have been combined by the nuclear pharmacist and Paul has undergone pre-treatment assessment, the injection of lutate takes less than a minute. As the lutate enters Paul's bloodstream, the peptide molecules carry their nuclear payload to the receptors on the neuroendocrine cancer cells. As a cancer normally grows, it's doing so by the parent cell growing first to roughly double its size and then dividing in two when we give this therapy it impairs their ability to divide efficiently and to grow before they divide. The cells get smaller and smaller until they simply divide themselves out of existence and that's when the tumour starts to shrink. I should be glowing in the dark right now. <laughs> Unfortunately, 
Not all patients are suitable candidates for PRRT, but for those patients that are, it can be the difference between life and death. Uh, it's one of the most effective therapies that I've ever been involved with. We have some fantastic uh, uh, stories of, of patients. Uh, a, a woman who came into uh, Peter Mac in a wheelchair being told that she had only weeks to live and she walked into the um, clinic for her, uh, her second dose of treatment. Uh, she looked completely normal. Um, she's back working, uh, she's living an entirely normal life. Another patient again with difficulty walking, um, uh, his ambition was just to live long enough to see his, uh, his daughter married. He, he did that in fact, danced at, at her wedding as well as walking her down the aisle, which is something that he never expected to do. With improved funding and research, with government and industry support, more patients will be able to be treated and more lives will be saved. This is now a rather restricted and limited therapy provided by only a few centres around the world. We think it's a very effective therapy. We use it only on compassionate grounds because of that, uh, and that requires us to perhaps use it later than we would ideally like to do. So that's the way it is, but at least uh, I'm on the program now, on, the, on a path to hopefully some better control. I know it's not a cure, but it hopefully will just control things and give me some uh, extra life. In 2014, the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organisation at Lucas Heights in Sydney will begin producing medical grade lutetium for use in this life-saving treatment. With the knowledge and expert experience of our net doctors, in Australia we are uniquely placed to offer our neuroendocrine cancer patients the best possible outcomes. If you'd like to find out more about neuroendocrine cancer or NETS, their diagnosis and treatment, please visit the Unicorn Foundation at unicornfoundation.org.au.